Welcome to one of two hop yards at the Ag Experiment Station. This one is at the Lockwood Farm in Hamden. Uh, these research plots were set up starting in 2013 as a result of interest by craft brewers and local growers as to whether we could produce hops locally. Hops really haven't been grown in the Northeast for over a hundred years. It was a common crop. It's one of the first plants that was brought here by the European settlers, but uh, diseases and prohibition combined to uh, cause the transfer of hop production to the Pacific Northwest and essentially eliminated here about a hundred years ago. Our research is to determine whether we could first produce hops locally, successfully, uh, and second, whether we could do this on a high or a low trellis. We'll talk about that in a, in a minute. And then finally, how we can manage insects and diseases so that we can get a high quality, um, good crop for local craft producers. Now in our research, we are looking at both the high trellis and the low trellis systems. The high trellis is obviously on my right, um, about 20 feet tall. Uh, low trellis is about half that height. The hops are perennial plants that come up in the spring produce binds that grow out of rhizomes in the soil. We train those up strings and they will climb sometimes over a foot per day until they reach, uh, reach the top of the wire. Um, just about the summer solstice they start to produce the side arms and those side arms carry the flowers. Now all the hops that are produced commercially are female plants that only produce female flowers. Those will result in the cones that are dried and become the hops that are used in beer production. The hop cones are the unfertilized female flowers on the plant. In the cross section on the right you can see the lupulin glands and the essential oils that give the hops their unique characteristics. The objectives of our research were first to determine whether we could feasibly produce high quality hops, second whether there were differences between high and low trellis systems, uh, what were the suitable varieties that we could grow, and then finally uh, could we develop disease and pest management systems to get healthy high quality hops. Our hop yields were measured as pounds per acre of dried cones at 10% moisture. The yield increased over the years as the hop yard matured, and then when we looked at different varieties, Cascade was the best, followed by Summit and then Newport. Our hop yields were consistently greater under the high trellis system than the low trellis system for the varieties tested, other than Pearl, which did not do well under Connecticut conditions. In addition to yield, we tested for alpha and beta acid content as a way of measuring quality characteristics. As you can see for a cascade, we were within norms delineated by the black lines or exceeding norms for alpha and beta acid content. Over the years, we evaluated over 40 varieties at one or both hop yards on high or low trellis systems, and we found that a number performed well over time, some of which are shown here. Another objective of our research was to develop disease and pest management strategies to allow production of healthy, high-quality hops. Downy mildew was and still is the most damaging pathogen attacking hops in the Northeast. We've developed an integrated program using chemical and non-chemical tactics to manage disease. Perhaps the most important way to manage downy mildew is with variety resistance, plant resistance. Cascade and Newport have crown or foliar resistance respectively and result in considerably less disease. In addition to our initial five varieties, we tested 40 more. Those in red appear well adapted for Connecticut with high yields and those that have a star also had low levels of downy mildew. We also observed varietal differences in the amount of damage done by the insect potato leaf hoppers and again, Cascade was the variety that was least affected. 
Working with growers, we've also demonstrated the presence of another damaging pathogen, powdery mildew, in Connecticut and incorporated that into our integrated pest management guidelines. We identified a new disease caused by a new species of fungus that we described in 2019 that infected leaves and cones in both Windsor and in Lockwood. We've incorporated all this information into guidelines for integrated pest management of hop diseases and pests that we've published at our station website. This incorporates biological, cultural, environmental, and plant resistance tactics and a pest management approach. Our current project is to collect wild hop germplasm from different areas of the state. Wild or native hops are still present 100 years after hop farming stopped. These are survivors that are likely hybrids of American and European hops, and we're evaluating these for resistance and unique characteristics to establish a breeding program to find a uniquely Connecticut hop. Male hops produce wind-dispersed pollen that fertilizes female flowers and produces seed rather than the lupulin and essential oils. As a result, male hops are often destroyed around hop production areas. At the experiment station, we're evaluating wild or native hops, and we're also making crosses between wild males and adapted varieties to increase the potential for new variety development. I would like to acknowledge the people who worked on this project over time, as well as the farm managers of the Windsor and Lockwood Farms. We also need to thank the Connecticut Department of Agriculture for funding through the Specialty Crop Block Grant and the Ag Viability Grants.